Answers to one of the big challenges facing authorities right now, and that's the alarming rise in youth crime. The most recent headline grabbing attention about that 12-year-old charged in a carjacking that ended with his 13-year-old accomplice being shot to death. Joining us this afternoon, Oscar Barbain is a professor of African American Studies and Psychology at the University of Maryland. And he's written extensively on the mental health development of young people. And Professor, great to have you with us. It's election season. A lot of candidates are running on crime crackdowns and they're tending to stress on how they'll lock up offenders. Well, now, it may make an effective 30-second political ad. But my question to you is, as someone who pays attention to these things, does that actually make for real crime fighting if we're just locking everybody up? That seems, uh, it's, it's easy to, to sort of uh, make a campaign speech out of that, much harder to gain any results in practice. What do you think? That's absolutely right. Um, and the, first you have to start with an analysis of the problem. And it seems to me that locking everyone else up uh, simply covers over the differences. And I guess what I would say is I've thought about these, uh, the, the spate of crimes that have occurred. They really fall into two categories. One has to do with uh, theft, uh, where someone uh, has something and someone else doesn't even like to have it, and they take it by force. And the other has to do with anger, violence, retribution, getting back at because of some injury. And I think if we frame this in a larger context, so if we thought about it, at the national and global level. So for example, uh, in, when we were attacked in 911, the, re the response was anger. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to go in with overwhelming force. We wanted to, uh, to make them pay for the kinds of consequences. And that, that actually that's what's happening with a lot of the violence, in America, that something happens to uh, some injury, some conflict, they don't know how to deal with it, and so they want to go in with overwhelm, just as our nation did. The second one, we would say, could be akin to sort of Russia fighting Ukraine. Ukraine has something that Russia wants, and so they're going to use force to go. So neither one of those represent adequate ways of responding simply by um, going. And so helping young people to develop alternative strategies for dealing with conflict is really, really important. Uh, certainly, uh, it's important to sort of get control over it. When I think about uh, youth and youth crime, uh, I think we see the tip of the iceberg. We see when it's all coming to a head. Yes. But things are bubbling up much earlier than that. And, and there are steps that really could be taken. But you understand, too, Professor, that that, that is, uh, the, the, that's the long term answer to this question people yeah, so are, people are looking is, for 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 quick quick answers and my guess is there probably aren't any what, what do you uh, think you are absolutely right uh the quick answers may make us feel better mm -hmm. but it doesn't solve the problem uh another generation is going to rise up doing the same thing and we'll be having the same conversation all of that having been said though where do we begin are there pl are there enough programs in place? Maybe that's what I, I should be asking you. If if we understand ways to remediate the problem, uh, are we doing enough? Are we are we spending enough time? Are we making the investment not just in money but in time uh, to to make a meaningful difference? So you, if you think about the problems, they're complex, right? They have multiple causes, mm -hmm. and in the studies that I've done. Um, I think first, uh, what I found is that that middle school, the primary school period is really a key turning point for a lot of kids. And if we can, in fact, salvage them, save those who are getting into trouble early during that period, it's going to be a lot easier than when they get to high school or become young adult men. And there are three things that I've found uh, that are needed. One, I'll call caring, control, and meaning that there needs to be systems of caring that convey to, to young boys, and because they're mostly boys, uh, that you're important, we have your back, we're gonna take care of you, we're gonna keep you safe. Another is control, structures of control, where there are limits, you know, like uh, in, uh, in Florida, there was a 14 year old out at three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. what was that child doing out then? So supervision, 
monitoring controls. And if parents are working uh, two or three jobs, then we need to think about how systematic the impact is. And then the final one is meaning that convey having a sense of purpose. You're important, affirming them, uh, sharing values, spiritual and cultural values uh, are really critical. Now, these are not easy. There's no single program that can do it. It requires the family, it requires the schools and neighborhoods. They all have to work together to provide these uh, assistance in this environment for kids to grow up healthy. Professor Oscar Barbain is the chair and the professor of African American, uh, chair as well as a professor in the African American Studies Department over at the University of Maryland and, and uh, someone to whom we turn uh, for the, 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 uh, the larger answers here because everybody thinks they have a short term fix. The problem is we're not doing much to actually get at the cause of this problem. Many thanks. Always nice to have you with us, Professor. You're welcome.